The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. So let's get right to this. Dow's down 25 at 26,528. Sudden big pull. It had a good rally earlier on this morning. It actually opened at 26,594. Went all the way to 26,611. Actually, let me just show, show you right here. Look how many resistance levels there are in the 26,600. It's right there. This is the automated Chapman wave. Uh, projections of support and resistance. Well, it got repelled, but then it dropped sharply. It went from 26,611, 200 points down to 26,419, but now it's right back to 26,527. This is a pretty darn good action. But one of the reasons is, have a look, McDonald's, MCD. McDonald's trading right now up. It was up three and a half earlier on. Actually, it went all the way to 200 round number high. No way. Well, first of all, no way that McDonald's is actually up in the 200 area. So 200 in a leg G, R, N, high. Um, doesn't mean anything because we're at 198.31, just an eye blink away from breaking 200 round number high. But if in the next three days, McDonald's, goes to its low of today, 195.50, and then takes it out, and then goes under 194.70, the 200-period exponential moving average, there's a good chance, especially based on the weekly chart, that there could be at least a minor pullback to kind of fill in where the little doji candle was back at 193. Um, I'm not saying that's even what I expect. I'm saying that's what I'd be looking at if there was a pullback Later today, going probably under 197.30, closing under that, giving back th three points of the, from the gain. Um, but this is really good action. In the meantime, back at the ranch, got to admit that. Uh, and it is McDonald's. Do you remember, what was it, a year, about two years ago, a year ago, I said, if I had asked, and I did, I asked a number of people, just friends, casual acquaintances, I'd be talking, i said, hey, if you were looking at... Um, the market would you think that whole foods oh this is before whole foods was taken over so it was before whole foods whole foods was uh, trading where would it be trading in relation to Mac, in relationship to mcdonald's and invariably people would say oh whole foods should be way higher but it wasn't why because the majority of people I mean, majority that's not necessarily in your town i'm just saying majority of people around the world uh, kind of like to go to McDonald's, and they've been improving the quality of their food for a long time. Very interesting. Congratulations to McDonald's. All right, enough with that. With all this little chatter. Let's get back to the Dow. I wanted to show you something because it's such a we're closing out the month today, right? <clears throat> Tomorrow starts May, so that means that the candle here in the weekly chart, if there is no new high above twenty six thousand six ninety five this week. Going all the way, it's just, it's just Tuesday, we've got a whole week to go. If by Tuesday we have not gone above 26,695 to extend leg C in the weekly chart, we've made a peak C. And that suggests that at any point, if there's a trade below 26,310, the low of last week, and then a close below that level, we should be going lower to at least the 26,188 level, the nine period moving, that green line in the weekly, <clears throat> possibly even testing 26,000. In this case, the 14 period moving average of 25,941. This mixed conglomerate that you're looking at is what's called the Dow Industrials. I mean, McDonald's and industrial. I mean, they might use industrial equipment to get that chopped meat, but it's not an industrial. All right, so we're looking at something that's a little unusual in that the makeup over the last couple of years of the, of the Dow has become very, very um, mixed, very much like I talked about the XMI from years ago. So let's get to the nitty gritties here. 
if there is, in fact, the MACD's neg dating negatives, casting's down at 74%, but it's trying to cross positive on balance volume is not bad. If there is a move that takes the Dow above 26,000 in 600s into the 26,700s, especially if it's this week, that's very good action. There's no question about it. Then this rising wedge formation in the monthly chart suggests 27,000s. It's probably going to happen sooner rather than later. I'm thinking it's later rather than sooner, but uh, <clears throat> we'll see. You just got to do what you got to do. Look at the S&P, made an all-time high, and the Dow should be following reasonably quickly to the, to the upside. That's 500 points. Uh, right now, it's 400 points, 450 points. So the S&P <clears throat> could make a leg D above the high of 2949.52, let me write, type that in, 2949.52. Um, and that would say that it's extended this leg C in the weekly chart, maybe goes to a leg D, and then we might be pulling back a little bit. But this is broken out in the monthly chart, very important. IWM, IWM is looking, <clears throat> holding quite nice. It came back from a very weak earlier part of the session, hit the, 14 period moving average for the, well, I don't know how many times, many times over the past two weeks. And um, now it's above that. It's above the nine period moving average, down to 74 cents at 158.29. In leg C in the weekly chart, just a modest leg C, still struggling, still way behind the 173.39 August of 2018 all time high, but a fantastic comeback from the 125s low of December, trading right now at 158.27. So we were watching that. Now I go back to gold just for a moment. Gold is up 3.7. This is nice action, but it's not great action. It is good that it held the Chapman Wave inside track propellant support level. Now it's bumping against the, in the weekly chart. Now it's bumping against the 9 and the 14 period resistance levels. But the MACD is negative and the stochastic is really poor at 13%. I just don't see anything for gold just yet. Not the big move in gold. And what I am looking at here is that the silver, so gold is up 0.27%, silver is up 0.18, up 0.02 at 14.96, lousy action. I'm sorry to say, just, I'm going to be polite, lousy action. Let's just, for a moment, looking at palladium, I was asked to look at palladium. Yeah, stuck in the range, but it's in the higher level. That's good action at 896.80, down 450. <clears throat> But nothing strong yet. It's just up in the higher range of this move that went from the 770s to the latest move. It went to 920, just about 920. Now it's pulled back. It's at 896. Palladium. Palladium is up 170, but it's nothing to see here right now. I, I said that I would do uh, wheat. Oh, oh my God, that's terrible. We are out of our, our, our uh, DBA, which is the um, agricultural ETF, we gave it the best chance we could. Uh, it didn't work out. And look at the soy soybeans. Oh, my goodness, this is terrible action. That suggests that the dollar actually could go higher at some point soon. Um, corn is down one and a quarter, two and a quarter, at 359, and was one of the better ones. Now we'll talk about the dollar. The dollar is trading down 24 pips at 97.62. Made a peak D, holding the 14 period moving average. I'll talk about that in a moment. And the euro. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians. The TAS Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi everyone, so in the patterns that we always look at, we're looking at cup formations in the chat, or even arch formations, just three patterns, straight up, straight down, cup or arch. And within that context, we are still looking at the dollar holding very nicely, especially the weekly chart. It will almost may certainly make a peak D if there's no high above 98.33 uh, this week. But it, I need one more down day, and then I have to put a down arrow in, although the stochastic's just under 80%. The MACD hasn't turned down yet, but these vicious turns with the, with the light green line uh, pulling back very, I call it the Lamar track uh, turnaround, if that cross is negative from here, that dollar is going to be going down to the 97.50 or uh, sorry, 97.30 area or 97 quite quickly. So this is going to be an important moment for the dollar. Meantime, back at the ranch, the it's not everything I wanted it for subscribers. Getting to the 98s from the 90 level um, doesn't sound like much. Uh, Nine percent, nine and a half percent over a year <laughs> in a currency. That's a big deal especially the dollar. And the dollar's gone to legs. See, in the monthly chart, I love the way it looks, and the MACD is still strong, uh, technically, in the, in the weekly chart. Let's see what happens. But if you look at the euro, the euro has had a couple of good days. Look at this. <clears throat> green arrow three days ago, nice green candle yesterday, another green candle today. Then got repelled at the 14-period moving average, trading at 1.204 right now. And I would just recommend that keep an eye on, I've got this, cup formation, big bowl formation, actually, uh, meaning that it's more a flat basin type, type thing than a cup, sharp left side lip and a sharp right side lip. This is just flat. <clears throat> and it is looking, especially look at this monthly. If it closes this candle right here in the monthly candle in the euro-dollar currency pair, with a stochastic in 18%, it's really not good in the weekly chart. And the MACD, quite good, actually. Stochastic at 11% in the monthly, and the MACD is still very poor. But <clears throat> imagine, just visualize, if all of May says there isn't a new low underneath the low that was made at 1.111, gee, you think you'd run out of ones, right? 1.11121. Let me just double check. I never get these right. 1.1112. I do get them right. Good. And that was on the 26th. Yep, the 26th. Let me just put that in. So call this the 26th, which it is, of um, April. 
And I'm just putting it in. I'll make it very light because these things get taken out so quickly. But let's say that it stays there. And this is a leg A. And for some reason, all of next week, there's no new low. And in fact, it tackles the 1.24 to 1.27 area over the next two weeks without taking that out. That could be a turnaround signal. And then I'm watching the dollar very closely because even if it's a turnaround, I suspect there's more backing and filling to do in the monthly chart of the euro. But it could be a nice rally, maybe a, a, a six-week rally. Who knows? And in that particular point at that time, the dollar could quite easily come all the way back to 95.70, just have another big consolidation. Higher highs, big consolidation. Higher highs, big consolidation. That could be the theme. So just let's keep watching, watching that. Now, I know the Fed is trying to push the dollar down. Uh, we've heard this. You remember when Paulson used to come out and say, oh, we want a weaker dollar, and the dollar was screaming to the 120, was screaming to the upside. So I don't, don't listen to uh, these guys because they, they have to try to talk things up or down or whatever it is. I'm just looking at the price, and the price right now says the technicals are still good enough to make even higher highs and I think it's the currency of choice based on the economic conditions in the United States being some of the best in the world. Therefore, the currency often represents that. It's like a little flagship thing. Maybe it's like a, 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 an icon of, of success. All right, just at least for now, we'll talk about it like that. USDJPY, it had that, pull, that pullback off the peak D in the daily, and it's still acting quite well, but it has done everything we wanted out of the Yen, we wanted the weekly chart to make another D. It keeps doing that. It did it again when it went there last week to 12. Um, so it was 12.4. Yeah, 12.40. And now it's pulled back. It's at 111.39. Just digesting the gains. Now, if, you, if you're looking at, um, I, I had a couple of questions. I'm going to get to them in a moment. So let's do the TLT. I've been talking about this for quite some time. I said that the I, I shares 20-year Treasury bond ETF is stuck in a range for now. It made a peak D in the weekly chart over at the 126.69 area. It's hugging the 9 and the 14 period moving averages. I wouldn't be surprised if at some point if the market starts to show some real weakness that it slides underneath. Um, no, other way around. I wouldn't be surprised if money starts to go into bonds with the uh, with the TLT rallying, if this market starts to go, come back sharply, so far it's held very nicely. But I suspect if the Dow goes under 26,320 uh, and then down under 26,280, you'll start to see money flow from the stocks into bonds. You'll see the VIX start to rise. It's kind of the... the, the that's the scenario that I'd be looking at. Meantime, uh, yields are just stuck in a range. Look at this, this the TNX, TNX, dot X. There it is. And it's trading at 25.16, made a peak D in the daily chart. But the weekly chart is lower lows and lower highs. And that will continue until a point where all of a sudden, I think you will suddenly see a big surprise as yields start to rally. But It'll be a surprise because you're looking at it over a period of weeks, but I would not be surprised. My, my surprise would be um, if there is a market pullback and money doesn't flow into bonds, then it's going to say something else is happening. All right, so I've covered that. I've covered yields. I don't know why I keep getting a message yet to say, uh, what was this? It's, uh, I'll read it exactly the way it was written. It's oblivious you don't understand bonds, and now apparently you don't understand the VIX either. If you short the VIX index, you would buy the TVIX, not hoping it goes down, but up. Your constant memory losses, loses, it says, are showing you need help. Please go and get some drugs. They may, might help you. I don't think I need that. And when it comes to the VIX index, I think I've proved over the 20 years that I've I've been watching the VIX very closely, probably more that I really, really do understand the VIX very well. Uh, but uh, be that as it may, and as, I don't know what you're talking about in the bonds. Um, and, well, first of all, if the, this is the highest short position, there's always the same person. It's Paul. Paul has a problem ex articulating in a in a a clear manner exactly what he's saying, but I, I, I'll deal with whatever comes my way. <laughs> um, the other thing is, if 
You're shorting the VIX. It means you are shorting the TVIX. Why? Because when the VIX goes up, the market goes down, Paul. It's not the other way around. That means that fund managers are shorting and shorting and shorting and shorting um, the VIX. That's what it said yesterday when I read that report, meaning that they think the VIX will remain low and that the market will go high. It's a benign look at the market. The wrong way to what you are discussing right now. The VIX goes up when the market is ready to go down. All right? It's not the other way around. All right. So in the meantime, back at the ranch, we're looking at the TNX. Crude oil is trading right now. Uh, up 44 cents. It's in this range. Remember, I drew this rectangle. It's kind of stuck in this range. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman does down 23. s and down 5. I'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. I want to go back, and I'm looking at GEG -E is trading at ten dollars and seven cents, up thirty-five cents, ran up to the fourteen, sorry, the two hundred period exponential moving average at ten fifty-one. It did ten point five three today. It's trading now down sharply from that level, but still a gap up. Uh, yesterday it closed at nine dollars and seventy-four cents, seventy-three cents. Had a high of seventy-four cents. And then it spikes up sharply. Uh, if you look at the weekly chart, it says, yep, great move, but I still think it's in a, a consolidation phase and that there's a really good chance that uh, later on, GE will really pick up steam, but I don't think it's going to be for a little while. Could be wrong about that because 
I don't know what was said today, but obviously the market has at, at first thought it was fantastic, and now on consideration says, yeah, it's very good, but it needs a little bit more proving, and that's what I see in the weekly chart. So I still see GE stuck in a range. Yesterday I was saying I, li I liked it in the sense that I was asked about it as a long-term position. I said, yeah, you could, you could start a position right here. It was in the uh, mid-nines. And um, now it's gapped up. So you've had a bit of a bonus just to say you've got a little cushion. I would not add to it right here. I'd wait. Now, the reason why I wanted to bring up GE is <clears throat> we've been looking at it for a while. We're looking, I think it was the 920 to 880 area. I said that would be the add to position. Um, it went down to $8.98 uh, on the 25th. Now it's run up very sharply, 898 Wow, almost a 20. Whoa, huge, huge gain, percentage gain. But I, I do think that, that now it's going to make a higher, it should make a higher low. In other words, now the nine, uh, the 933 to 948 area would be the next very sharp pullback support. Okay. Now, I wanted to also mention, because it was discussed um, by uh, George in New York. George also just wrote this morning. Good morning, Basil. Hoping all is well. Just an update. I started a new long position on Oxy. Let's go to Oxy. Oxy at 58.03, and I think I, I'm going to discuss this because other people might want to hear it. A lot of people have a lot of respect for George. He has longer-term positions. He's not afraid to sit there if it comes back a bit because it's a longer-term position. So for reasons as far as one, Oxy is off a 52-week high of 87.67 on the 7th of June, 2018. Absolutely. Good, good. Uh, did make the H pattern, and that's very important. Um, number two, as the largest average, average in Permian Basin at 2.5 million acres as of 2016 uh, year, yes, presently for fracking, announced three, announced late last week, will offer Anadarka a higher price than what Chevron offered Anadarka. Number four, based on present earnings of 530 to four, for 2018 year that just passed in its medium P of 16. The value is 84, and five dividend yields of 4.76. That's a very nice dividend yield. I would also consider that dividend yield is something now that I would consider only for number six, which is confirmation today with Buffett pledging $10 billion to Oxy if an Anadarka deal goes through. Have a good show, George, New York. So, George, I'm kind of with you on this. Now, for my subscribers, would I put this in the in, in the pocket of the, the portfolio that we have? I would probably say with a caveat, a big caveat. Why? Because it seems to me when they finish with all the spending, there's still a chance that over the next, what are we in April, finishing up, sorry, May, by July, about July the 10th of July, maybe through August, the first or second week of August, we could have had some kind of, by that point, we could have had a rally and then a start, a pullback that says, whoa, the whole digestive thing for this particular move is costing us a little more than we thought. That almost always happens. So there'll be some kind of a pullback. So I wouldn't be surprised if the 55s, even the 53s are tested. But if you're looking out, especially with Buffett there, I think you're right. I think in the long term, uh, look, I'm talking about two years to three years. I would not be surprised to see it have a really good rally to the 65, 72 area. Um, and if it can go higher than that, that'll be very impressive. But yes, I agree with, I, I, I like your thinking. Just not sure that at least for me, it's the kind of thing that I'd be looking at for subscribers for a couple of reasons. And I just named a couple there right there. So let's just do the next thing, which is, I had a question about, wait, 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 wait there. Uh, what was it? Oh, the transportations, IYT, what does it say? Uh, transports minus one, a couple of them are having big pullbacks. Yeah, I'm anticipating some kind of a pullback. I mean, we had a great move from 186 where we got in for subscribers to 200. I, it's, not, it's not the full position. I didn't really even want to take profits. I want to rather be thinking in terms of adding to this at some point. Uh, I think we're getting close to some kind of support. I'm not sure we will break and close for more than a couple of days under 190. Maybe it goes back to the 188 area. But maybe I shouldn't have given back some some of the gains. But, you know, this is I want this more as an add-to position. 
so I didn't want to get too carried away with you know hopscotching around in and out, in and out. I like what I'm seeing so far. That's important. The next thing is the XBD. Well, let's just look at the IAI, which is the um, this is the iShares broker dealer ETF trading at 63.49. Uh, we went all the way yesterday to 64.12. Uh, we belong since about 60. I like this. This is, this is the area that we spoke about in my webinar, discussed it in detail, say we're going to start putting positions on for certain reasons. This is one of the reasons. Now I say the cup formation, key what happens here, we could start a bit of a pullback with the XLF. Let's see what the XLF is doing. XLF, what was the question about the XLF? Yeah, the XLF also making a peak D. Very nice action here. Uh, we are long bank stock has done very nicely. It's a SLF is at 27.90, the S&P Select Financials. I like this action. It's in leg C in the week. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some kind of a pullback here. I like it. I want the XLFs, the, the financials, to do well. I want to see the XLF breaking into the 28.80, 29.20 area in May. That's going to be really important. I want to see that because I want to see this trend line taken out decisively. Um, okay, next thing I'm looking at here was a question here. Uh, could I look at uh, the XLI? XLI is the, uh, this is the S&P industrials. See, this is only, this went in an alternate wave count. I, I, I couldn't do anything with this. This went to a C. I suppose I could call it an alternate count. Nah, I can't really. This is where, this has gone to a C and it might fail. I don't know. It might be telling me, hey, just be careful because there could still be a leg D to the upside in the uh, industrial, the S and P uh, select industrial uh, fund, spider fund, and it's trading at 77, 78 right now. It needs to get above 78.95 to start a leg D. It could fail here yeah, because it's under the previous major high. But most importantly, this is a peak C, a leg C, which will make a peak C if there's no new high this week. Watching it closely, XLU question, uh, XLU question. But I had one first, which was FTCH. I don't really see anything just yet. How can I put this? Uh, whatever this is called, this is called Farfetch Limited. And it's not really Farfetch because it's gone from the 16, almost a round number low, 15.99 on the week of the 4th of January. And it goes to a peak B, it skyrockets all the way to 31.60. Pulls back to the 23s. And right now it's at 24.97. I think it's stuck in a range. So I'm just going to say, I, I don't know if I'd go long this right now. I do like the technicals improving. I'm not sure. I'll be right back. Down, down, 22. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when and gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the gold report currently 
currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let Gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Uh, just on a very short-term basis, let me just say the E-mini down 250 right now at 2940.75. Really, pretty darn good action because earlier on, it slumped all the way. It went from 2945 to 2926, 20 points down, and now it's only 250 uh, down. Uh, this is very good, and if it starts to trade above 20, uh, hold above 2943, I'd say that's really good action on the day. If it suddenly turns around and starts to go back down underneath 29.36, I'd say, uh-oh, be careful for the close. Now, what's really important about this, uh, in the Dan uh, Coda says, ouch, on Goog, advertising not so hot. Yeah, so this had an alternate count, F slash C. I'm, I was going to do this yesterday, and I said, I'm going to call it a C for now, but I do want to put in the F slash C just in case, but I, I just didn't have any idea that there'd be this kind of uh, damage down 105 points at 1182 right now. And yesterday it closed, listen to this, it closed at 12, uh, let's see, 87.58, having hit 1289.27. So this is a whopper of a decline. Leg D, look at that leg D from the 27th of, of July of last year, uh, 27. 1273.89 was a PD high. Goes to trough E at 970. That's a real big uh, decline. Makes a new all time high. And then that's a leg D. And now it's pretty much going to be a peak D. And then look at that weekly chart. I would have said G slash A. And I, I, I was going to say, because it's the same analysis I've done for all the charts that have had this huge reversal from the December lows and then made a V shaped recovery. I was going to say, I'm going to keep it as a G slash A. Everything about the move thus far is suggesting that even if it's a, 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 an A, there could be a pretty good pullback and then start a brand new move going into to early 2020 into much, much higher highs. Uh, but let's just leave it at that. And I'm going to just say the same thing right now. Let's just leave it at that. I, we don't have any position in a, in a $1,182 stocks, so thank goodness, we're just looking at it. But this is good action on the Dow, I must say. Think of any other time when some a major stock, like a FANG stock, takes an 8 or 9% dive, and the market says, ho, hum, yawn. I mean, this, I, I, I have to admit, this is good action uh, so far. That doesn't mean to say the digestive phase couldn't go on a little longer. I was asked about the SMHs. Yes, the SMHs up 97 sets at 116.17. The key ones that I'm watching have pulled back, but there was one that I saw when I was at the uh, um, health center this morning uh, go by on the ticker. I'm the only one that uh, any of these places that ever <laughs> tunes into the uh, financial uh, markets. So what was it called? What was it? NXPI. I see NXPI going by up six, up seven, NXPI. And then I remember, I, I remember seeing exactly the same thing three months ago when it was doing the same. This is um, NXP Semiconductors NV. This is the Netherlands. 
um, goes to leg A, B, C. This is leg D in the daily. It's only A, B up. It's D in the weekly as well. Gaps up huge. It gaps up from yesterday's close at 90. <laughs> this is amazing. Yesterday's close was at 102.86. It goes up to 107.70 earlier on, showing 104.86, still holding halfway into the wick. Let me just do this so that we've got apples to apples. So we've got, um, that's good. So we've got the daily in leg A, peak A, leg B, peak B, leg C, peak C, and now leg D, gap up. And you've got the, the weekly in A, B, C, leg D. Very nice action. And... Uh, it's only in leg B in the monthly, and I can't give it a buy. I can say buy signal, but it's not a buy mode yet. So this is very good action. That's really helping. What did Intel do? It got it slammed the other day. Now it's up a little bit. Yeah, it's up a full 14 cents at 51.25. So let's look at advanced micro devices. So advanced micro devices comes out today with earnings. Now, the stocks that have run up into earnings, I know that you can't make a rule of this, but some of them then gapped up after rally. But some of them ran up and then just pulled back very sharply. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, well, I can get no information here other than to say peak E in the weekly, a very good rally in the monthly in the monthly from the low that was made in December in the 16 area, 1603, goes all the way to about 30. But the all-time high was this last high, well, not all-time, the last high was 34.14 in September. Gets cut in half, goes to 16. 03 in December. So this is a pretty good move. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, advanced micro devices from the pure technicals, I would say there could be some residual strength, but it's it's priced to perfection. If there's if there's any disappointment, 25 is just coming right there within a two points down, uh, eight percent, boom, just like that. But if there is a surprise to the upside, that really is going to impact the SMHs and that SMH which at this particular point is trading at 116.02, making an arch formation. Uh, let's say and the technicals are not that strong, but it is holding okay. It did gap down the other day. 120.71 was the last high, all-time high, actually, on the 24th of April. I'm watching this closely because if there is weakness, which I got a feeling there's going to be weakness, we'll see what happens. The XLK, which is the S&P Select Spider uh, Tech Sp Fund, has not really done very much. It actually didn't get blasted based on Google. Google must be in there, surely, tech sector. So it's holding very nicely. It's down four cents at 78.54. Watch this closely because within this context, if there is a look, the Magnes just turned down, stochastics now at 80%. This is really on the cusp. It has to be, it's priced to perfection, at least for this earnings round. Anything bad happens, be careful. So I thought I'd cover those things. One thing I'm missing, uh, I did that, 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 I did that. IWM I did. Oh, IYC. IYC is the, right there. IYC is the iShares U.S. Consumer Services ETF. It has Amazon, Com uh, Comcast, Disney, Home Depot, Netflix, McDonald's, Walmart, Starbucks. Oh, I did that. I wanted to do it right now. And this is very important because it recycled them into A, B, C. Wow, it's right at peak D as we speak right now. It's a little extended. It's starting to get tired. Still acting very well, just down 66 at 217. This is the IYC looking at closely. I'll get back to it in a second. I want you to do it. I had a question about Costco. So I said I'll do Costco together with um, Target and Walmart. So, so peak D in Costco trading at 244.24. Down four cents, made a peak D in the daily. Only a leg C in the weekly chart, and I think it's getting right to the left side testing of it made a new all-time high. I'm calling this a leg G in the monthly. We've seen so many of these. I'm going to have to do a lot of work to find out whether I'm calling this a G slash C. I think it's going to be a C more than a G. But look at this. Costco holding very well. Has to hold 241 in the next two weeks because if it goes under that, it starts a consolidation that will impact the weekly as well. Walmart, Walmart, WMT, 
trading at 102, up 43 cents. That's the same thing. Peak D in the daily. Hasn't made a new recovery high in the, in the uh, weekly chart. And it's kind of working real hard. And look at Target. Target had a gap down after a peak D in the daily. You know what? I'm going to show you something interesting when we get back. We'll look at Amazon. I'll be back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last Last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge, heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. We're back. And let me just fix this little bit of problem I got here. Close. There it is. Oh, no. That was a mistake. Let's get out of that. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Uh, delete. Remove. Okay. So what we're looking at, oh, I made a big change. I should never have done that. Darn. All right. So the IYR is holding quite nicely. What we were looking at is Amazon. That was during the break. I was just doing that, and that messed me up here because I did something I shouldn't have done. I'm going to have to go back, make some changes. No, no, no. I, I, Amazon trading at uh, 1924 down 14. Have you made a leg E and a possible peak E yesterday? And I, I'd be a little careful here. There are just so many Ds and Es unfolding. Uh, I think that we're in for a little bit of a consolidation. We've started already. 1956.34. That was a very good year. I, I must have been 56. I don't know. Um, and we're looking at on the 29th, it does that. Just pull back a little bit today on the nine period exponential moving average. But I'm looking at this as a leg D in the weekly chart. This is kind of where other things can happen. Remember the Chapman wave? Leg D is where we look for other things to happen. So just be real careful now. What am I going to do about that particular issue I had a problem with before? All right. Well, let's keep going. We're looking at um, 
So Costco, I think Amazon has really impacted these other stocks a lot. And we'll talk a little bit more about it, what it means and what, what, what's going to happen. Let's see what the close is like today. It's very important to see where we close the last day of the year. There is some buying coming in, end of the month. We'll see if there's beginning of the month in May. We'll look for that as well. Meantime, back at the ranch, just remember that we're looking at um, a rotational a kind of a rotational correction going on here. Massive pullback in Google, but the others are holding well. Intra, intra sector, we're looking at some of the semiconductors just getting hammered, and then others have been holding quite nicely. So advanced micro devices tonight is going to be very important. We'll have a lot more tomorrow. I'll be back with Tom a little later on today. Uh, meantime, we're looking at some of the positions we have in my opening call. That's still holding very nicely. I like that. That's going to be very important uh, going into the first week of May because these are I'm looking at the bigger picture. So we'll be looking at that very closely. Hey, thanks for being here. Have a wonderful day. Otherwise, I'll see you a little later on with Tom. Check out my opening call. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.